This video was brought to you by Technically Not a Technician. This video is for educational purposes only. In today's video we will be optimizing Windows 11 to run on a Raspberry Pi 4, we will be configuring our build for passive resource sharing, we will activate our Windows 11 build, and we will copy our base image using Win32 Disk Imager, so that we can populate our Raspberry Pi 4 cluster quickly with a similar base operating system for best efficiency and performance. If you haven't seen my do-it-yourself video on how to install Windows 11 on a Raspberry Pi 4, then please find the link above and in the description. The video is very easy to follow, and anyone can do it. If you'd like to get the best possible speeds, performance, and Windows experience, please try this guide with a USB 3.0 32GB driver better. You will need to update your BIOS and turn on that option in your Raspberry Pi 4 in order to boot from a USB port. If you'd like to check out my do-it-yourself video on how to update your Pi to boot from USB, please find that link above or find that link in my description. In our last WOR video we finished our Windows install. However, we didn't optimize our system or overclock it. As you can see on the Pi Monitor program we are still at our base clock speed and no changes have been made to our system. Before I optimize Windows 11 to run on a Raspberry Pi 4, I'm going to overclock my Raspberry Pi hardware and optimize it to run Windows. To do this, I'm going to move to a standard Windows computer and place my USB drive with Windows 11 for the Pi into my computer. If you choose to overclock your Pi please know that this will shorten the lifespan of your hardware and you do so at your own risk. In order for us to overclock our Pi, we'll need to download WOR boot, and if you're downloading WOR boot, you should also get Pi Monitor. Both are great tools, and if you wish to overclock your hardware before software optimization, then WOR boot is a necessity. Both of these downloads can be found at the WOR Project's download page. I will link to it in my description, however, WOR Project, or Windows on Raspberry Project, are both very Googleable. Both downloads are very small and will not take much time once started. In order to install the software, all you have to do is unzip the program into a folder. I've got a folder called Pi Tools on this computer, and that's where I've placed WOR boot and other Pi related tools I like to use. Because we're only unzipping WOR boot, and because I've already got it working on my computer, I'll not be reviewing the WOR boot install, but instead we will be jumping right into using the software to help us overclock our Pi. After we've placed our USB drive with our copy of Windows on Raspberry we will need to use the WOR boot program to access the drive. I'm guessing that when most of my audience places their USB drive into the computer you're getting a prompt to format the drive. Do not format the drive. What we will need to do is run the WOR boot utility so our computer can see the Raspberry boot drive. We will need to run the WOR boot as an administrator or you will not have access to the drive. After we have run WOR boot as an administrator, the boot utility will ask us what drive we wish to mount. Please make sure you pick the right one. I'll be picking my 32GB drive. Once our drive is mounted we should have full access to the config file. I've found that accessing the config file via the boot utility seems to give me the greatest stability, but your experience may differ. 
When editing config files I use Notepad++, but please feel free to use anything you like. As you can see I've already made some changes to my config file. Please don't be alarmed if your config file doesn't look identical to mine. You should have all of the top settings and none of the bottom. For time, I've tested a ton of overclock settings and I've picked what I wish to use as a base clock for all of the Pi 4s in my cluster. For those of you asking, why not overclock to the highest settings and just leave it? Well, the answer is simple. First not all of the Pi 4s hardware are equal. I know on paper the specs are all the same, but I've got Pi 4s that will not overclock past 2GHz and I've got some that are fine past 2.1GHz. The second reason I'll not be overclocking to the highest settings possible is that I'm planning on using this image most often in my Pi Farm cluster. If I were to use these as a daily use computer, gaming, or watching streaming services, I may overclock to higher settings. The current settings that you see before you worked, however, I don't feel they offer me as stable performance as I would like. In short, what I've done to test my overclocks is adjust each setting little by little, and then I use the system by streaming video, playing a game, or run a CPU load program like Load Team. For Windows, most of the time I simply test the CPU with Load Team. Load Team is a great program, it pays me to use it when I'm testing CPUs, and that's really cool. Load Team also lets me adjust the load the CPU is carrying, so I have some flexibility in testing, and I'll link to it for you in the description for those of you that would like to try it out. For today's video I'm going to skip right to the gold and show you the settings that I've picked. However, please feel free to experiment with your settings. For the final changes to my overclock, I will set the GPU frequency down to 600. Because my cluster will be headless I'm also going to tell the config file to ignore my GPU memory settings, and I'll also be disabling the force turbo option. I'm going to leave both of these options in the config file, I'll just not activate them by default. The last thing I will do is change the CPU speed to 2 GHz. This is a 500 MHz increase in overall CPU speed and should set most Pi 4 hardware up for success when running Windows 11 on the Pi. Before we go any further, I also want to point out that if you overclock make sure you have the needed cooling to support your overclock settings. With that out of the way, simply hit save and now your config file has all of your new clock speeds. We'll need to unmount our drive and we after we unmount our drive we may get a prompt asking us to format our USB drive. If you do, please ignore the prompt and hit cancel. We'll now remove our USB drive with our Windows 11 on Raspberry image to our Raspberry Pi 4, and once booted, we'll open the Pi Monitor software and we should see our overclocks listed. As you can see, our 2 GHz CPU speed is listed and all of our system information to include CPU temperature is shown. Now that we have our hardware configured, we will move to our software and optimize Windows 11 by shutting off as much of the optional background services, we will remove as much bloatware as Windows will let us, and we will turn some options off altogether. To start our software optimization we will navigate to our Windows menu and click on our setting icon. If you can't tell, Windows is still running laggy, even with our overclocks. Once the setting menu opens, navigate to the apps icon in the left hand side menu and click on it. This will be the first area that we will make some software changes. At the top of the apps menu, you will be presented with an installed apps menu. Click on that option. It will take a second to populate, however, once done you will have a list of all of the software that is installed on this Windows 11 image. In short, we'll uninstall most programs, and if we're unable to uninstall a program we will deny the program access to run in the background and deny it any system resources. Just a heads up to everyone in our audience, but for time, I will speed parts of this video up. As you can see, we now have all of the apps that are installed on this build listed on our menu, and you can see on the right hand side of each app are three dots. If you click on those dots it will open a menu for the corresponding app 
and it will let you know what your options are for disabling or uninstalling that app. If the app is unneeded I uninstall it when the uninstall option is available. However, some of the apps don't give you an uninstall option. When this issue presents itself simply turn off all of the app permissions, set the background app permissions to never, and click terminate so, if it is running in the background it will be turned off. Every time you navigate from menu to menu, Windows must repopulate the list of programs it has installed. However, the more you turn off, disable, or uninstall, the faster Windows will run. I'm going to speed through either disabling or uninstalling each program. However, I will stop when I come to a program we want to keep, and I will talk about why we are keeping it. You'll see that I'm skipping the Microsoft Edge, Edge Update, and the Edge Web View applications. I'm going to skip anything browser related at this time, because I don't want this video to be about installing software, but simply making the operating system work better on the Pi hardware. I do wish to change to another browser, but that's just not this video. You'll note that I've installed, and I'm skipping, and I'll not be modifying Notepad++. The truth is I installed this previously, and you may not have it on your build. The snipping tool has an option to uninstall. However, I may wish to use this in the future. So I will only disable it. I find the snipping tool helpful. If you wish to completely remove it please feel free to do so. I'm not going to change terminal, as I may need it for troubleshooting. I'll also be turning off the Windows security option. Please keep in mind. I'll be using this computer as a miner or a PC farm. This build is for passive income apps, and I'll not be using this as a daily driver. If you don't wish to turn this option off that is up to you. I'll point out that turning this option off does seem to free up resources, and the Pi seems to run Windows cleaner in this manner. You should now have an installed apps list that looks very similar to this. However yours may vary. Now we will want to navigate to the area that says privacy and security. Again, I wish to remind everyone that we are building a base image and I will not be using this as a daily driver. With that in mind I will also be temporarily deactivating the built-in antivirus. Again this will free up resources, and the Pi does seem to run better with the antivirus disabled. Temporarily deactivating the antivirus also deactivates the ransomware, and in truth you are totally unprotected. Please be smart and use good judgment when you're in this vulnerable state. Next under privacy and security will we want to look under general and turn off all of the advertise and tracking options off. This will prevent Windows from using your hardware resources for things that do not benefit you.
When you scroll down, still in the privacy and security section, you'll come to an app permissions menu. Here you'll want to go through and turn off any last hidden items. For time I'm going to fast forward through this section. As you can see I'm simply going to each subsection and turning off anything that's not needed. A good rule of thumb is if you think you need it keep it on. But please don't worry, because you can always go back and turn the setting back on. Next we'll be going to the systems menu, and then we will look for the notifications section. Once here we will be deactivating the notifications. I'm also going to disable all of the additional settings in the notifications section. I now want you to take your mouse and click on the magnifying glass. In the search bar, type the word, performance. When you do you'll get the option to run a program called, adjust the appearance and performance of Windows. Please run that program. When the program is running make sure, that adjust for best performance is highlighted. Once you have best performance highlighted make sure you click apply. In this next step, I'm going to activate Windows with a set of scripts known as Windows Activator. I'm not going to show you where to get this, as I'm unsure of the legality of it. However, I will tell you, that if you simply Google Windows Activator script, you'll find what you need. Once you find it, download it, and it should come as a zipped file, and if you have your antivirus active the set of activator scripts will be flagged as a virus. This is a false positive. If you're worried, do not proceed. When you're ready to activate your copy of Windows, unzip the folder, and navigate to and open the folder named script. Right-click on the batch file, and run it as an administrator. The batch file will execute, and make the needed changes to your operating system. If you try this with your antivirus on it will fail. Once the script is finished, it will let you know that you can press any key to exit the activator. If you have followed all of the steps in this and my other videos, you should have an active copy of Windows for the Raspberry Pi 4. This will work best on a Pi 4 with 8GB, however I have run active copies of Windows 11 off of an SD card on a Pi 4 2GB model. I do not recommend the 2GB models as the RAM is less than ideal. Now that our copy of Windows is active, let's replace the background with a solid color. I think this is easier on the GPU, and it's easy on the eyes. Let's also take this build for a test run, just to see how snappy it is, and let's see how she feels. I've got to say for such lightweight hardware this little system really seems to run well. I'm not going to lie, it takes a ton of setup. However, once you have a nice base image everything after that is much easier.
As you can see, even the browser responds well. Let's take a look and see what happens when we do a Bing search for our channel name, technically not a technician. It looks like the very first video that comes up is my Raspberry Pi Miner video. Please take a second and give me a Bing or a Google, I've got a ton of videos and I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel. Now that we have the perfect base image for all of our needs, we need to copy the image to our hard drive. This is important because of all the time we have invested into building this image, and if we wish to use this base in more than one project we now simply flash a new drive, and we will be ready to rock and roll. To start this process we will need a donor image to copy our Windows image over top of. You can pick any image you want, as long as it is in a .img format. I'm going to download and use the Raspberry Pi OS Lite image. You can get a copy at the official Raspberry Pi web page. As you can see this image currently has a small file size, the file size will change once we copy our Windows 11 over top of it. We will also need to rename this file to something you will be able to remember. I will be using Win32 Disk Imager for copying our image, and you'll need to have your USB drive with Windows on Raspberry Image inserted into your computer's USB drive. You may get a prompt to format the USB drive once it is inserted into your computer. Please cancel that prompt, but note that you do not have full access to the drive yet. In order for us to once again get full access to the drive we will need to navigate to our Pi Tools folder. Once you're in the Pi Tool folder open the WOR boot utility and mount the drive so we have full access to the drive. Please remember to run the boot utility as an administrator. If you don't run it as an admin you will have issues. We will now open Win32 Disk Imager and use it to copy our USB drive over to our image on the hard drive. Please navigate to our donor image and select it. I've placed mine on the desktop to make it easier to find. After we've selected our image we'll also need to select our drive. After having both the image and the USB drive selected we will need to pick one of two options. The first is to write the data on the device to the image file and the second is to write the image file to the device. We'll need to write the data from the device to the image. Please make sure you click on the icon that says read. Once started this will take time, and the faster your computer the less time this will take. I'll be fast forwarding this section. We now have our Windows image copied over to our desktop, and we now have the ability to simply copy our image to a new USB drive. Before removing your drive be sure you unmount it. If you don't it may cause errors. We'll now remove our USB drive with our Windows image, and we'll insert a new blank 32GB drive, and we'll transfer the image we just made on our desktop over to our new drive, to test and verify that it works. As you can see the 32GB drive that I have does have some information on it, the information came with the drive, and all of this information will be lost. 
If you have anything on the drive you wish to keep you will need to make a backup copy, as everything on this drive will be formatted and lost. I could care less about this information, so I will not be making a backup copy. I will now select our Windows image from our desktop, and I will select our new 32GB USB drive. This time we'll be taking the information on our Windows 11 image, and we'll use it to flash the USB drive. I do want to show you that the image file size has changed, because of the larger image size of our Windows image. This is normal, and it helps to show that all of our data from our drive is now in our image. After you have both the USB drive and our Windows image selected, we'll need to click on the Write to Drive icon. This will take the data in our image and write it to our USB drive. Transferring the data from the desktop image to the USB drive does take longer than transferring the data from the USB drive image to our desktop. How much time this takes will depend on your computer and how fast it is. The faster the computer, the faster this process will take. I'll be fast forwarding this for time. I do want to take this time to ask that you please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and please feel free to share my videos with your friends. Everything seems to have worked, but let's verify that this newly flashed 32GB Windows on Raspberry Drive does boot and will work as expected. I will now move back to the Raspberry Pi and see if this new USB drive boots into Windows as designed. I will be again fast forwarding this as this video is super long. As we can see this image is working very well, and we have no issues with it. I now am able to make a Windows on Pi image anytime we wish to. We can also now do it quickly, and without needing to use any of the online tools. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed and found it informative. Please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe.